spooky note. There's a hole in my stomach that no one can see. A monster is howling for prey in a tree. A key is needed to gain entry. Solve the puzzle. I couldn't think of another rhyme. J. Hey Jared, it's me, Miles. Open the door. Did you read the note? Read the note? Yeah, I read the note. It didn't make any sense. Solve the freaking puzzle. Okay, a monster is howling for prey in a tree. A key is needed to gain entry. All right, there's a tree. That looks like a monster. This must be the monster they're talking about. Sure looks like a monster to me. So feed the hole. There's a hole in this bucket, but how do I feed it? Oh. Hey, look. A bottle of isopropyl alcohol. This is how I'll feed it. This is how I'll feed it. Is it still rolling? I think so. You need to make sure. Yeah. This is how I'll feed it. There was a key inside that baby. What took you so long? What took me so long? Well, aside from your puzzle, I went to the retro game store and I picked up a few things. <laughs> the titles in your possession can't possibly interest me as I have such a narrow and sophisticated taste in games. So, so you want me to leave? Do you want me to leave? Present your meager pickups. Are you sure? I'm as sure as Walter was about using the 12 sacraments to resurrect his dead mother. Okay, I'll see you later. Wait! That meant yes! All right, so here's what I picked up. Gargoyles Quest 2. Jay. Uh, Earthbound. <sighs> Trash. Rule of Rose for the PS2. Even worse. Grand Theft Auto, The Ballad of Gay Tony. That's good. The Silent Hill Experience. Go on. Silent Hill 3. Only the best. Right, okay, I'm cool. Uh, Silent Hill 4. Controversial, but go on. Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Get the fuck out of my house. What did I do? What did I do? Do you even realize how problematic you are to the only series I care about? In here is a tragedy. Are the player or audience? Be as it may. Do you even know what Pyramid Head represents? Do you? Do you? Yeah, he's he's that big guy from the movie, right? He got in a fight with the Cenobite? 
Man, that was a cool fight sequence. He's like that girl's guardian angel, right? Movie? Angel? Fucking ah! angel! My franchise! He's a sick casual! He's a sick casual! Fuck! My series! My <laughs> perfect series! Casuals! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's so delicious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Lucky charms. Now, do you understand? I think so. I just... I, I'm not too sure about the multiple dimension theory, but... I guess it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because that's the beauty of video games. Just hanging out and postulating fan theories about your favorite video games, and ultimately just having fun. Just hanging out and having fun. Fun? Yeah. Fun? You think games are about having fun? You've learned nothing! Do you even understand? I've given up everything! Everything! So I could dedicate my life to being a moderator on SilentHillHeaven.com! Prom Night 2004 was spent playing Silent Hill 3 on Extreme Level X! I didn't get to be Prom King! I didn't get to experience the cool active parties, or go-karts, or sex, or having your parents pull you aside and say, Son, we're proud of you! But how many of those monsters and people suits can say they've had the God of Thunder costume legitimately, huh? And you bring this disc of filth and lies to my sanctuary from the American Devils? Answer me! What's wrong with you? I just wanted to play this game! This one's got titties in it! My daddy loves titties and I bet you it! Just play the game, please! <laughs> oh, Let's play this shit. I have to warn you, this game asks a lot of sensitive questions. Are you okay with that? Yeah, bro code. Bro code? Yeah, bro code. Whenever the game asks personal questions, just look the other way. Oh, okay, sure. I'll look the other way. Wink. You said wink out loud. daughter too? Why is this not freaking you out, me not knowing you? This isn't the first time you've acted weird, Harry. What does that mean? Be straight with me! Stop it! If you know my daughter... I know of her! Let's not go there. So what are you to me? Why do you have to be like this? Just leave things be, Harry. Harry? Galia!
After the release of Silent Hill Origins, the director, Sam Barlow, and his team at Climax Studios wanted to create a follow-up Silent Hill game on the PSP. This unknown PSP title was abandoned in favor of a producer's idea of a Nintendo Wii exclusive first-person shooter set in the universe of Silent Hill. This project was titled Brams PD. That's the very same police department that Sybil Bennett from the original Silent Hill operated from. Brams PD would have been a spin-off of the main franchise. It would have starred an amnesiac police detective searching for his partner, which in the context of the series as a whole would have been another rehash or cliche of Silent Hill 2 story. Apart from the shooting gameplay, transitional sequences featuring sessions with a police psychiatrist were to be implemented, making the game the world's first truly interactive psychological horror. Ultimately, this project did not receive Konami's blessing, which isn't surprising knowing them, and Bram's PD was abandoned. Or so, Climax Studios thought. Climax continued work on their next project, which was intended to be a new installment in the franchise titled Silent Hill Cold Heart. Recently, scans of the Cold Heart pitch documents were leaked on the internet. In Cold Heart, you would play as a 19-year-old psychology major named Jessica Chambers. The game mechanics heavily resembled the Disaster Report series, more notably Raw Danger. As in Cold Heart, it was envisioned with melee combat in mind and a body temperature system, requiring Jessica to scavenge for food and clothing to stay warm in the cold. It sounded pretty badass. Climax wouldn't let go of Bram's psych profile system, so there were plans to implement them within Cold Heart. The idea was to introduce the Silent Hill series to a new and vast set of players thanks to the Wii's large install base. For whatever reason, Climax was very hesitant that the Cold Heart project would not convince the higher-ups at Konami in its current state. Climax had the idea to take elements from Bram's PD and Cold Heart and into integrate them into the already established series. The new Silent Hill project would be a reimagining of the first game, an idea that would be much easier to sell to Konami, much easier than a Silent Hill slot machine. It's alright. I won't leave you alone. Silent Hill. Oh wait, that fucking thing exists. This is the story of how Silent Hill Shattered Memories came to be. Silent Hill Shattered Memories is a reimagining of the very first Silent Hill game. It's not necessarily a full reboot, as there are just too many unique elements that let the game stand on its own merits. How this title immediately differs from its muse is the emphasis placed on story and exploration instead of combat. Before the title screen, you are given a psychology warning, which tells you that the game will measure your choices and get to know you. After you start the game, you are shown a VHS tape of a happy father and daughter visiting an amusement amusement park, Lakeside Amusement Park. Enter Harry and Cheryl Mason. One thing that the original Silent Hill never touched on was the relationship between Harry and his adoptive daughter, Cheryl. Here they explore a little bit more about the relationship and the psychology of Harry Mason, so that alone makes this game worth checking out. The story begins in a psychiatrist's office. Your character walks into the room in the first person view and sits down on the couch. You're not quite sure yet if your character is Harry or it's a fourth wall breaking extension of the player, but that's probably intentional. You're asked a series of questions by the psychiatrist that will affect the game world. The perspective changes to a third person camera and you play as series veteran Harry Mason. Harry Mason, a middle-aged author and father of Cheryl, wakes from an apparent car wreck to search for his presumed missing daughter in Silent Hill. 
For this review, I played through the Wii version of the game, which takes advantage of the Wiimote by turning it into a flashlight. In my opinion, the Wii version is the definitive one. It has better graphics, and the Wiimote helps add an extra layer to the immersion, but it's not without its flaws. This is a semi-open world game in the sense that you can run, jump, pull out your map and roam around, and climb your way through the town with some variations on the pathways you take with each subsequent playthrough, but ultimately all roads lead to the same end. Keep in mind that the game is constantly measuring your actions throughout, not just verbal choices found in a Telltale game, but subtle actions, like staring at alcohol bottles, or staring too long at a poster of a sexy woman, or staring at a woman I won't for be too long. long. You know, last time I had a guy in my apartment, it was summer. During the heat wave. Now it's winter. Freaky early, but still. Time flies. Get up. I thought you were a nice guy. I saw you peeping. Wait. Uh-uh. You should have been better behaved. Most of the fun comes from the psychology system, as changing up your playstyle encourages multiple playthroughs to achieve different outcomes. When you switch back to the psychiatrist's office, you're asked really personal questions or given obtuse psychology tests that also alter the game world. Each choice made by the player will change elements about the world on the fly. These elements range from NPC clothing changing or personality differences, access to certain areas, visual differences within the world. There's almost too many changes to list, and that's the fun of it. It's a really fun game to play in the company of friends, but just make sure you trust the person you play with. I'm going to throw out some words. Nod when they fit how you were at school. Shake your head if they don't. Ready? Ah. Virgin. Hmm. If you're an old Silent Hill fan, you might notice how different the town is aesthetically from its predecessor. Rust and metal are traded for ice and snow during the other world transitions, which provide a chilling yet cozy atmosphere. The snow motif is also carried into the real world through the game box with a snowflake shaped disc holder. How meta. Silent Hill is now a populated town with people living their lives, but like Max Payne, the people are all indoors avoiding a blizzard. Don't let these elements shy you away. There are still some scares to be had. In a smart move by Climax, they had hired Akira Yamaoka and singer Mary Elizabeth McGlynn to provide the soundtrack for the game, which to me, an Akira Yamaoka directed soundtrack is an essential component to any great Silent Hill game. The sound design is to be expected, it is still top notch, and excuse the pun, but this score is far chiller than previous entries in the series. The OST contains some melancholic piano tracks and ambient airy sounds, which are dampened by the snowy plain. It's a great fit for the frozen world. Sadly, this was Akira Yamaoka's last contribution to the Silent Hill series. Shattered Memories has one aspect that holds it back from greatness, the monster encounters. Several times throughout the course of the game, the world will transition into ice, and abstract monsters known as raw shocks, har har, I get it, will chase Harry. Fun fact, the appearance of the monsters will differ based on your psychological profile. Anyway, these segments are usually the most frustrating aspect for many players, as Harry has limited options for defense. In these segments, Harry has to run from monsters and get to the end of the level. It's not always clear where you need to run, and although Harry can whip out his GPS, it doesn't pause the game, and the monsters can still attack you. What makes these segments a pain are the waggle control for the Wii. If Harry is caught by a raw shock, it will hang on to him until you shake them off or you die. When playing with friends, I notice most of my friends will just shake randomly, which doesn't get the raw shocks off. You need to calmly center the Wiimote and shake in the direction of the monster to toss them off your back. Look, it's frustrating, even when you know what to do. Harry can find a flare that he can use to scare off the monsters temporarily, or he can knock over objects as an obstacle to the monsters. He 
can also turn off his flashlight and peek through doors as to not draw enemy attention. Harry can also hide in lockers or under beds until the enemy leaves, but there still is a chance that an enemy can find you. I know some people hate the running segments, but they remind me a lot of the Clock Tower series, and I find them still to be spooky, albeit flawed. Like any modern man, Harry possesses a cell phone. The cell phone stands in for the radio this time around to alert you with a high-pitched static whine warning you of enemies or shadows. <laughs> feeling the cell phone was a nod to the 2006 movie. Scattered throughout the world are phone numbers, all of which are mostly optional and they just add a little bit of additional story. The operations center is closed right now. Information regarding hunting season dates, zone demarcations, and the purchase of hunting and fishing permits can be found on our website. In the event of an out of hours emergency, please call local emergency services. He also has a 0.9 megapixel camera in his phone that can take low quality photos of ghosts that also reveal a little bit more about the story. Sorry, I hit you. I guess I was just mad at myself. You look so much like my daughter. Just put the wig back on and uh, let's go upstairs. There's a GPS feature in his phone, but it's ultimately useless when you need it the most during the running sections. As far as the story is concerned, it abandons the cult of the order angle found in the original series, and this was an intentional move. It's more of a spooky ghost story than a horror epic dealing with ancient demonology, which makes sense for a title trying to form its own identity. It does follow the series trope of an amnesiac protagonist forgetting crucial details about their situation and conveniently recovering their memory in the last act, but that doesn't make the story that remains any less effective. Few games touch me on an emotional level, and the ending I received hit me pretty hard. To close out this review, I just want to make the point that change can be a good thing, and even though the chase sequences and shattered memories are flawed, I think the removal of the combat was a great attempt at reinvention. However, I still think Climax should have done something to emphasize more survival elements in the game to strike a balance for the missing combat and add a much needed sense of challenge. If they would have incorporated more of the disaster report survival against the elements on top of the psychology system akin to what they had planned for Coldheart, I think Shattered Memories would have gone down as a time-honored survival horror classic. As it stands, it's a fairly easy adventure title with horror elements present and a unique psychological system that I would like to see more adventure titles implement in the future. The game can be played through in around four to five hours, depending on your puzzle solving ability, but it gets shorter with subsequent playthroughs. The game length feels just right, and it's short enough to encourage the multiple playthroughs. Just don't go into Shattered Memories with the same expectations as the original Silent Hill series. Keep an open mind, and you'll be fine. This game doesn't feel like a blemish on the face of the series at all, but more of a love letter written by Silent Hill fans for Silent Hill fans. No Tom Hewlett jokes to be found here. This game is interesting and worthy of your time. <laughs> Bravo! Bravo Hewlett! Tommy Hewlett. Bravo. Wait a second. You liked a western developed Silent Hill game? A non-canical, Tom Hewlett produced Silent Hill game? Oh my, Samael, I liked a western Silent Hill game. Oh wow, that's great! Oh hey man, I'm real sorry about Silent Hills being canceled and all. It sucks, we'll never get to play a new Silent Hill game again. But hey, look on the bright side. I have Silent Hill Downpour right here. No! Now I understand the real reason I became a Silent Hill fan. My entire adult life has been a lie. A lie I convinced myself in attempts of forgetting about my horrible deeds. 
I liked a western developed Silent Hill game. What was I afraid of? However, without you Silent Hill, I've got nothing. Now we can be together.